Hello everyone, welcome to another video. This time we're going to be looking at the Mancunian Way. Manchester and Sheffield are two of Britain's biggest cities, but you'll never guess it from their transport links. They're only 35 miles apart as the crow flies, but just two main roads, the winding and often hair-raising snake and woodhead passes, connect to the former industrial powerhouses. However, if the 1960s planners had had their way, things would be vastly different. The Mancunian Way is now one of Manchester's most famous landmarks. A feat of mid-20th century innovation and ambition, the highway in the sky was originally built to reduce journey times across the city, particularly for lorries going to and from Trafford Park and the docks at Salford, but it was also envisaged as the start of a cross-Pennine motorway that would allow drivers to speed uninterrupted from the heart of Manchester to the M1 just north of Sheffield. The route would have cut a swathe through Gorton, roughly following Hyde Road before joining up with the M67 at Denton. Then it would have bypassed the now notorious bottleneck of Mottram before, most ambitiously, tunnelling under the Peak District Hills and emerging at the other side in South Yorkshire. So what went wrong and why was it never built? The answer, in short, is geography and money. The Pennines have always presented a formidable barrier between Lancashire and Yorkshire, and the vast costs and engineering difficulties in navigating such inhospitable terrain, not to mention the inevitable objections to driving a six-lane motorway through the Peak District, are a large part of why the plans were never completed. It's not to say, however, that some progress wasn't made. The five-mile stretch of the M67 is the most visible example. Dubbed the motorway to nowhere, it stops abruptly at the roundabout in Hyde, one of the worst pinch points on the entire UK road network, before the traffic grinds on slowly to Woodhead Pass and beyond. On the eastern side of the Pennines, the Stocksbriggs Bypass, which opened in 1988, is another section which eventually came into fruition. Other parts, most notoriously the Mottram Bypass, are still being argued over to this day but for a time it seemed like the whole thing would be built. In the 1970s the plan seemed unstoppable. A post on the Pathetic Motorways website reads, The main rail line between Sheffield and Manchester underwent fabulously extensive upgrades in the 1950s, electrification and the boring of a brand new Woodhead Tunnel under the Pennines, but it was run into ruin by the Department of Environment with the intention that the tunnel would be used as an all-weather route for the motorway through the most mountainous section. It was only when one of the best intercity lines in the country had been fully closed that a cost on benefit analysis revealed that better value for money could be achieved by pouring money down a bottomless pit. The new motorway route was subsequently scrapped. In December 2014 the plans resurfaced and the Department for Transport announced that it was once again exploring the possibility of a new route that could cut journey times between Manchester and Sheffield to 30 minutes in what was described as the most ambitious road scheme since the construction of the first motorways 50 years ago. This time the idea was to build a 25 mile tunnel, the longest in the world under the National Park. Such a connection could have a dramatic impact on the economy in the north, particularly in combination with plans for high-speed rail links, the Department of Transport said. It would be capable of fundamentally changing the nature of the journey between two of the most important cities in the north. But the invaluable landscapes and the ecological significance of the Peak District National Park rule out a surface link. The only credible solution, maybe, is to construct a tunnel under the central part of the Pennines. Initially it was estimated the cost would likely exceed £1 billion. By 2020 that figure had rocketed just a little bit to £12 billion. Despite the proposed tunnel being halved in length, sounds about right. So it didn't come as a surprise when the following year the plans were once again quietly dropped. In a letter to Transport Secretary Grant Sharps, Transport for the North said the plan faced significant challenges and said other options should be considered to improve cross Pennine links. Road and rail links between Greater Manchester and the Sheffield City region are currently really poor and need investment in order to level up opportunities for the communities they serve across the Southern Pennines corridor. While a tunnel dual carriageway may not be the answer, We've expressed our view 
to government that more work should be done to look at environmentally sustainable solutions for both road and rail across the Pennines. Professor Joe Moran, a lecturer in English and Cultural History at Liverpool John Moores University, says the long-running saga sums up the UK's rich and complex history of road building. So he just had a few short words to say. This was the great utopian scheme superseded by make, do and mend. The plans announced with great fanfare followed by Tetris stakeholder seminars. The spectacular elevated urban motorways replaced by roads buried inside tunnels to hide them from an embarrassed world, he writes. But those historical contrasts can be overdone. There is a tendency to caricature the planners of the immediate post-war era. It is now customary to dismiss these utopian schemes as unworkable. Infected by historical arrogance about their capacity to remake the world. This reflex dismissal is part of a general post-Thatcherite suspicion of the public sphere, planners and big government. But it is infected by its own kind of historical arrogance, a suggestion that our forebears were stupider than us criminally naive about the world in thrall to the car that they were creating. In reality, many of these schemes were flawed attempts to manage cars and make life with roads bearable. It's fair to say that he wasn't really all that impressed. Anyway folks, there we go. There is another video on yet another plan scheme that never went ahead. Seems to be quite a few of these. Uh, I do hope that you have enjoyed the video. If you have, give it a like, share, consider subscribing to my channel and click the notification bell to never miss a video. Thank you for your support as always and until the next video, take care of yourselves folks and ta-ta for now.